Well, good morning. Good morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And even as we begin the season of Lent, we still remember that the purpose of our Lord coming into the world was to suffer and die on the cross and then rise again. And we give thanks to him for the forgiveness of all our sins and for life eternal in his name. This morning we're using the order of service on page 203, and let us be, and we, because of Lent, we omit the glory in excelsis, and we also omit the Alleluia response at the, uh, before the gospel, but we do use the track. So in your folder, the track for after the epistle is put in there before the epistle. So make sure you turn back for that. All right? Let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge. tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy rescue him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday in Lent, is from Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. And I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be, my, to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. <coughs> By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, 
for out of it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 4. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who is, who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the Holy Gospel. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these I will give you, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, 
and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all Who's here? 
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you believe it? The serpent makes his attack and Adam just stands there. He doesn't say or do anything. He's silent. He's standing there as the serpent takes on Eve and he says nothing. We're waiting for Adam to leap into action and guard the honor of his family and to protect his beautiful bride, to be alert for, for anything that might bring eternal death. And he just stands there speechless. What makes it all the more unbelievable is that Adam had two main duties in the garden. He was to work the garden. That is, he was to be Adam the gardener and take care of it. But he was also to guard the garden. And so he was also to be Adam the security guard and ward off intruders. A security guard is only needed, of course, if there was a possible threat. And sure enough, there was. And Adam would be given the opportunity to prove himself and show what's he, what he is made of. The serpent came. Now, you may think of the serpent only as a, a little slithery snake like the one that you see in the children's books. But the word for snake here can run the gamut of a simple snake to a dragon to a giant monster. But the main thing about the serpent was that he was a threat, an enemy. So the serpent comes. But no problem, we're probably thinking. God has prepared his beloved firstborn son, Adam. He has told him of the possible threat. He has armed him with his word. But this serpent comes right to Adam's bride, Eve. And she's valiantly trying to do her best against him and his lies. So we're waiting for Adam to do his thing. Show some love. Protect your bride. Step in and be the teacher that you were told to be. The leader that you were called to be. But he does nothing. Come on, Adam, lead. You know what's at stake. God said that the day you eat of it, you shall die eternally. So do it. Do what you're called to do. Show your bride your love and drive him out of the garden. Remind Eve of what God said. Come on, Adam, say something. Call the devil a darn liar. Drive him out. Quote God. Preach God's word to the serpent. At least pray and cry out to God for help. God's creation is at stake if you don't act. But he doesn't. He's unwilling to suffer. He's unwilling to give his life for his bride. He's unwilling to open his mouth and speak God's word. When backbone is called for, Adam has a backbone of jello. When self-sacrifice is called for, he feared it. And when he was called to lay down his life, and protect his wife 
and the human family. He did nothing. God put Adam to the test, and he failed. God put his son, Adam, to the test. The English word for temptation comes from a Latin root that refers to stretching something out or putting something under tension in order to see how strong it is. When you put someone to the test, you want to see what he's really made of. What, where is his strength? What is his character like? What he relies on? Temptation goes to the root of things. To the foundation of what is believed and trusted. Adam flunked. He failed in his calling. The world needed him to act and he didn't. But what about you, sons of Father Adam? They say that the son takes on his father's mannerisms. You have also. You've taken on Adam's cowardice. There's, there's often silence when you should speak God's word. Men, what if you were judged on your spiritual leadership of your family? Who teaches your defenseless children God's word? Left to your wife? To your pastor? Grandparents, have you ever said anything to your uh, wayward grandchildren? Or have you been silent? Simply thinking, well, I can't really do anything. They're adults. I don't like them living together before marriage. Or how about you women? Satan attacks your friend, wants them to get an unscriptural divorce. And you didn't say anything. In fact, you encouraged her. Your child announces that he's not going to church. You don't like it. But all you do is shrug your shoulders as Satan grabs a hold of his soul. Where's the backbone? Where's the leadership? Why won't you give yourself fully to others for their spiritual good? The truth is, when it comes to your calling in life, your self-love overwhelms you. You flunked. But thank God for today's gospel. You have over and over again lost your nerve, been cowards when God's word should have been spoken, been without the love and self-sacrifice needed, to protect others from spiritual harm. You've loved yourself too much. You like to think of yourselves as spiritual warriors, but the truth is, you're a weakling and no match for Satan's high pressured tricks. As I said, thank God for today's gospel. For Jesus succeeds where Adam failed, where Eve failed, where you have failed. But be of good cheer. Jesus, who is full of the love 
and self-sacrifice that is missing in you by nature goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Satan in order to win for you. Your sin lands you in the wilderness of this world with no protection, no help, no hope of saving yourself from Satan's wiles. So Jesus Christ goes there to do battle for you and fulfill his calling as your savior and victor over the serpent. Now, watching Jesus isn't like watching Adam. We're not sitting there waiting for him to speak. We're not waiting for him to stiffen his backbone and his courage. We're not waiting for him to respond to the devil. For his sword is always at the ready. If you are the Son of God, command these stones to be bread. Do you really think God would not want you to eat in these circumstances, Jesus? His response is lightning quick. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then again, if, if you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down from the top of this temple. Go ahead and put your father's words to the test. But instead he pierces him with sure and certain words. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And then again, the final test at this time, on the exceedingly high mountain. All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. He promises Jesus glory in this life. So that can't be right. It would contradict the Father's plan for him to suffer pain and die and be buried and then enter into his glory. So he can't be silent. Be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Look at him, refusing to remain silent, refusing to be a coward like Adam, like you. Instead, look how much he loves you. Look at him giving his life for you, his bride, the church. Look at him giving honor to his father at all times and in every way. The devil took Jesus to a high mountain to be tempted. But then God the Father took him to the Mount of Calvary for his greatest test, a test that he took for all whose courage to confess him and his word has failed them. And he passed the test. But you get the grade A+. Plus. There in the midst of the anguish and torment of the suffering for the sins of the world and bearing the Father's wrath against sin and sinners, he loves us and the Father to the end. As he cries, it is finished! He wasn't silent there, and he's not silent now. As Satan continues to tempt you to mistrust God's words, hear the voice of the second Adam to you, his cherished bride. He says, you are mine. You are my bride, more beautiful than Eve, 
baptized and covered in the forgiveness of sins. You're my church and I am your leader whose courage has never failed. You are my beloved for whom I held nothing back and still don't as I set before you my body and blood. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise for prayer. We give, we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone. Our trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. In our prayers today, we want to remember the family, the Spilger family. Uh, David was called to his eternal home this past Wednesday. He had been a employee of Tim Irvin's for 35 years, and many of you know him. So let us pray. Lord Most High, you are the dwelling place of your people. For the sake of Jesus, who suffered temptation and death for our redemption, be our refuge. Preserve us from every evil and plague, and strengthen us in faith that we might be satisfied with your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, the first Adam stood idly by as Eve was tempted in the garden. The last Adam, your son Jesus Christ, endured the taunts of the devil and overcame him in the wilderness, emboldened those who called to, called to serve you in your name, to stand against Satan with the weapons of righteousness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As your son overcame Satan in the desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we marvel at our own perceived power, your might surpasses all the might of man. Do not let positions of authority or influence be used toward violent and wicked ends. Bless us with wise and faithful leaders who will preserve our freedom and promote its use for noble purposes. Guide all legislatures, judges, and authorities in our nation and state. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Merciful Father, though we deserve nothing of your kindness, you have shown yourself to be the strength of the weak, the healer of the sick, and the hope of those who mourn. Hear us on behalf of those who are troubled in mind or body, the dying and those who grieve, especially Barb, Sean and AJ, Dave, Dana, Wes, Lois, Karen, Louise, Patty, Lois, Charlene, Neil, David, Calvin, and Kurt. Sustain them through their afflictions and pain. Heal them according to your gracious will and deliver them at the last to everlasting life in Christ. Almighty God, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, deal graciously with the family of David and all who mourn, that casting every care on you, they may know the consolation of your love. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, the fall of Adam closed the way to the tree of life, but the death of Christ on the tree of the cross has opened to us the way of everlasting life. Give us the fruit of his cross, your forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, see how the adversary continually afflicts us and walks about as a roaring lion seeking to devour us. We implore you for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, to help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit and to strengthen our hearts by your word, that our enemy would not prevail over us, but instead that we may abide evermore in your grace and be preserved to life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, everlasting, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet in mercy, you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary, you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, this cup, is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you both body and soul in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Go now in his peace. Amen.
O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. again. Just a couple announcements. A reminder that we have our Lenten services on Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, preceded by a supper at about 5.30, 5.45. Uh, I'm not sure, is there one more left to sign up yet? There may be one more supper left for someone to sign up for if you'd be able to. Uh, so please check the board, uh, the ch chart in the back on the board. Any other announcements that need to be made today? May God richly bless each and every one of you.